So it's finally here. The next simulated universe expansion, this time titled Gold and Gears. Similar to how the Swarm Disaster expansion was based around the Aeon Tazenroth and the Path of Propagation, this expansion will be revolving around the Aeon Naus and the Path of Eurydition. So let me start off by saying that this expansion is huge. If you thought that the Swarm Disaster was content heavy, then you're going to be in for a shock when you see what Golden Gears has to offer. Stepping into this mode for the first time can feel a little bit overwhelming with all the new mechanics and menus, so in this guide we'll be comparing Golden Gears to the Swarm Disaster mode, covering what's new in terms of mechanics ranging from the new cognition locked branching story to the absolutely insane dice customization and more. So let's jump into it. So the first major change that you'll notice is that we no longer have a single globe to represent the Swarm Disaster, but instead we're presented with a new expansion module menu with both the Swarm Disaster and the new Golden Gears expansion as individual nodes. So this is actually pretty exciting as it brings with it a few implications. So firstly, it looks like the official term for these simulated universe modes will be called expansions. And that the plan looks to be to eventually release a new expansion for every path. So if you look at this circular menu here, you can see that it clearly has room for more expansions in the future. So we can expect to see an update for the Aeon Zype and her Path of Harmony or one of the many other paths that we've yet to touch upon in the simulated universe. So hopping in further, we have what seems at first glance a very similar layout to the Swarm Disaster main menu. So let's start off with a familiar face here under the neural network. This is essentially just the ability tree from the original simulated universe. It works in exactly the same way in that every clear of golden gears will reward you with some kind of currency, which you can then use to unlock more nodes in the path tree. This time around though, the grind won't be as tedious as once you've completed the main story for golden gears, you'll get a boost to the currency that you earn on each subsequent clear. Now, if we hop back over to the main menu again, this node here under gold and gears is where the story unlocks the house. But this time around, unlike in the Swarm Disaster mode, you're going to find yourself in this menu quite often as it's not just a spot to replay the stories that you come across, but instead Mihoyu have built the story around this pathing mechanic that's tied to a status known as your Cognition Value or Cognition Bracket. So at first glance, it's going to look like a whole lot to take in, so bear with me here. The simplest way to put it is that your Cognition Value is a value in Golden Gear that starts at zero. So as you play through the game, this value changes on a scale ranging between minus 40 and plus 40. Your cognition value can change through a number of different things such as special domains, random occurrences or emergencies. And at the end of plane 1, 2 and 3, the value that you end on determines whether or not you unlock a new node within the story. So let's take a look at this diagram here of the story path so we can see how this works in action. We can see here that this flowchart is sectioned off into three columns under first, second and third plane. And that each node has a cognition range tied to it. We can see here that our cognition value at the end of the first plane will determine the story node and reward that we unlock with it. So with an ending value of between 0 and 40, we unlock the top path and the die face general perception. And then if we end the run with a negative value of between minus 40 and minus 1, then we unlock the bottom path and the die face general topology. And so when you move on to plane 2, you will retain your cognition value. And here we can see that the requirements to unlock the next node on that path. And so because this is a branching path, you need to make sure that you pay attention to the cognition requirements in order to hit the right nodes in plane 1 and 2 in order to hit your targeted node in plane 3. Thankfully, however, you won't need to jump into this menu all the time as while playing through the simulated universe, the cognition brackets are shown here on the UI and the nodes that you've already unlocked in the past will have a check marker on them. So once you've unlocked every possible node in a particular plane, you'll be able to unlock the final story node for that plane known as an Aeon Secret. So there are two Aeon Secrets for each plane for a total of six Aeon Secrets. These secret nodes have a much tighter cognition range such as 20 to 30 for plane 1 or between 30 and 40 for plane 3. I also wanted to note that if you're playing Golden Gears in difficulty 1 then you will be limited in regards to what nodes you can unlock as the maximum and minimum ranges you can hit is limited in lower difficulties. So for example in a difficulty 1 run the range is limited to plus minus 15 and this range increases as you go up in difficulty, with difficulty 4 and higher gaining access to the full plus minus 40 range. Additionally, upon starting each run, the game will select a recommended route for you. These recommended routes are just nodes that you have not unlocked yet, and once you've unlocked everything, they will just be random. So this route will be highlighted in green on the UI, and the cognition bar will also have marks on it to denote this range. You are incentivized to follow this recommended route as it does provide you with additional rewards if you're in the right bracket range upon completing each plane. 
Okay then, so now that we've gone over the story unlocks, let's just rewind a little bit and talk about those die face rewards that I mentioned earlier, because this is a great segue over to the new core mechanics of Golden Gears, custom dies and die faces. To explain it simply, yes, it is exactly what it sounds like. These are dice that we were introduced to in the Swarm Disaster, except that this entire mode is now built around them and they are fully customizable. But it's not that straightforward, so let's really break it down and compare it to the Swarm Disaster system so that we get a clearer picture on how this all works. So when we look at the Swarm Disaster system, mechanically this entire mode was based around the path that you selected, with each path providing a vastly different playstyle in terms of in-game mechanics. For example, the destruction path was quite simple in that you gained a stacking damage buff every time you entered a battle, and you also had a special destruction type die that had faces that played to this gimmick. Then on the other hand however, you would have a wildly different experience if you went down the abundance path, which introduced the mercy system. This system caused you to lose 3 countdown on every non-mercy tile and gain 1 countdown for every mercy tile. It also presented you with a special abundance type die that also played into this gimmick, allowing you to add more mercy tiles to the field. Now, so when you look at the Golden Gears system, what's changed is that these gimmicks are no longer tied to your path, but rather to the die itself. So this is great because one of the bigger issues with the Swarm Disaster was that you were forced into a particular gimmick if you wanted to play a certain path or vice versa. So a really good example is that I really enjoyed playing the Remembrance mechanic for the duplication of tiles, but I didn't have a strong ice team at the time to take advantage of the residents. So Golden Gears solves this problem as our path is now independent from the map mechanics as they are now instead tied to the dice that you pick up for your run. So breaking it down, in the Swarm Disaster your path determines the starting initial effects, for example getting two Trotter Beacons at the start of Plane 1 and 2, this has now been moved over to the custom dice. Also in the Swarm Disaster you had a passive effect which grants you a stacking bonus when you achieve a certain criteria. So using the Trotter example again, you would gain critical damage for every Trotter that you killed. So in Golden Gears, this system has been split into two. The first component is called the Passive Effect, which outlines the criteria that you need to achieve to get the bonus. But now the stacking bonus is referred to as the Path Boost, which is instead tied to your chosen path. So now if you pick up a Trotter dice, every time you kill a Trotter, you gain a stacking bonus based on the path that you're running. So critical damage if you're running the hunt, healing bonus if you're playing abundance, shield strength if you're playing preservation, and so on and so forth. So how's that sound so far? Instead of 8 paths providing 8 different gimmicks, we now have 12 different custom die that provide 12 different gimmicks, which can all be played using any one of the 9 possible paths. So let's talk about that term, customizability. Each one of these 12 dice can be fully customized on their 6 faces out of a pool of over 60 dice faces. Yep, that's right, over 60 dice faces, and you have access to the entire pool with limitations based only on the rarity of the face itself, with it being either gold, purple, or blue. So, did you want to play Abundance Path but have Trotter Beacons spawning everywhere? Or did you want to play Destruction but have the power to duplicate tiles? You can do whatever you want with the system. So how about we take some time to go through what each of these custom dies brings to the table. So the custom dies are separated into 4 categories, with 3 dies per category for a total of 12. We start the game with the beacon type category unlocked, and after clearing the simulated universe using one of each of these beacon type dice, we then unlock the 3 domain type dice. Once you beat the simulated universe on difficulty 2 or higher using all 3 domain type dice, this unlocks the next category, the calculate type dice. And then you guessed that beating the simulated universe in difficulty 3 or higher using all calculate type dice will unlock the 4th and final category, the heterogeneity type dice. Hey everyone, present day Nackfrog here. So since the recording of this video, I've had a chance to check out the live version of the game and some things have changed. Mostly inconsequential stuff, just like the grammar on some of the die faces and custom dies. But the one change that I do want to make a note of is that the calculator effect, which I'll be speaking about shortly, has now been changed to knowledge. Knowledge. Everything else about it remains the same, it's just got a different name, so I didn't want you to get all confused when jumping in for the first time. So, back to the video. So, let's jump over to the beacon category. Here we have the Trotter Extrapolation Dice, which is played around defeating Trotters. It grants you 2 Trotter Beacons at the start of the first and second plane, and then it gives you 100 fragments for every Trotter that you defeat, along with 1 stack of your path boost. Then the Walker Symbiosis Dice applies Calculate to 2 random domains at the start of the first and second plane. 
So the calculate effect is a new domain marker that applies different effects based on what die you have in play. So in this particular case, every time that you apply calculate to a domain, a random beacon is generated on the field. And then if you step into a domain with the calculate effect on it, you then gain one stack of your path boost. So for this particular dice, it makes sense that you would pick and choose die faces that revolve around applying as many calculate effects as you can to the field in order to make the most out of it. And now let's jump over to the third remote type dice, the ultra remote beacon dice. And this grants you one random beacon at the start of the first and second plane. And then when entering a domain with a beacon on it, you gain a blessing along with one stack of your path boost. Now for the domain type dice. We have the occurrence extrapolation dice, which turns one random domain into a reward domain at the start of the first two planes. It also grants you one extra blessing along with one stack of path boost every time you enter an occurrence, abnormal occurrence or reward domain. The combat extrapolation custom dice is similar to your swarm disaster destruction path. It causes two random domains to turn into an elite domain at the start of plane one and two, and then it gives you one courier every time you beat an elite. The path boost is granted whenever you win a battle, regardless of whether or not it is an elite, normal, or a boss. And then we have the pursuit type dice. So this one's pretty unique in that it expands the plane one and plane three map. Essentially, this gives you an additional column on each of these planes, and then it also lets you move from one domain to another regardless of distance, as long as the domain that you're moving to is the same type as the one that you're moving from. So moving from one domain to a non-adjacent domain will grant you a stack of the path boost. The next set of dice that we will look at are the calculate type dice. So just as a reminder, the new calculate effect is an effect that does different things depending on what dice you're currently running. So the first example here, the countdown dice, is a great example of this. The countdown dice reduces your initial countdown value by 5, and it also creates two calculate tiles at the start of plane 1 and 2. So these calculate tiles act very similar to how mercy tiles are in the swarm disaster, in that you gain one countdown every time you step on a calculate tile. You also gain one blessing for every 10 countdown that you have upon entering a boss battle, and then you also gain one stack of path boost for every point of countdown that you have. So comparatively here, if we look at the Amber Barrier dice, this also applies two calculates at the start of plane 1 and 2. However, the calculate effect here is similar to the Cornerstone effect that you would find in the Preservation Path. So in this mode, domains with calculate on them will no longer collapse, and then the dice also has a passive effect of granting you 20 Cosmic Fragments for every domain that is under the calculate effect when you enter a boss, abnormal occurrence, or transaction domain. You also gain one stack of Path Boost for every domain that you apply calculate to. Then we have the investment sale dice. Just like the others, this creates two calculates on the field at the start of plane 1 and 2, but this time you instead gain 50 cosmic fragments for every time a domain with calculate collapses. If this domain was an elite, reward or adventure tile, then you instead gain 100 cosmic fragments. And then if these domains had a beacon on them at the time of collapse, this amount is once again doubled. And now let's talk about the last set of dice and home to my personal favourite die. This series is called the heterogeneity type dice. And the first one, Company Time converts two random domains into a transaction domain at the start of plane 1 and 2. Its passive effect refunds you 30% of your cosmic fragments whenever you purchase a blessing, curio, or enhancement at any store. You will then also gain one stack of path boost for every 100 cosmic fragments that you end up spending. The curio extrapolation dice creates two curio trotter beacons at the start of plane 1 and 2, and its passive additionally grants you 50 fragments and one stack of path boost for every curio that you obtain. And then last but not least, my personal favourite dice, the Data Inflation Die. So this custom dice grants you one cheat at the start of each plane, and also one re-roll for every move that you make. Its passive is really unique in that it incentivizes you to run buff type dice, as the passive removes the duration on all buffs, making them last for the entire fight. And not only that, every time you roll a buff, you gain that buff even if you re-roll the dice again. This means that you can re-roll a single dice six times to reveal six different faces, to obtain all 6 buffs on your next fight. The fact that you gain 3 free cheats and up to 22 rerolls for free means that you can easily walk into any boss battle with permanent uptime on 6 dice buff for some insane combat shenanigans. So that covers all 12 of the unique custom dice that we can pick up from this mode. So now let's have a look at how the customization works. So this can be accessed by clicking on the edit dice face button when picking your custom die or via the main menu. So when you first start playing this mode, your dice will have a total of 6 face slots, 2 golds, 3 purples, and 1 blue. You can place a lower rarity face into a higher rarity slot, such as a purple or blue into a gold slot, but obviously not the other way around. 
So as you play through the game and unlock more power-ups in your neural network, you'll be able to upgrade these slots, turning one purple into a gold, and then later on one blue into a purple. So once you've maxed out your dice, you'll have a total of three golds and three purples to play with. Now, in terms of the faces themselves, there's a huge amount in the game, over 60. So I'm not going to go through all of them individually here, otherwise we're going to end up with a two hour long video. So perhaps in another video we can go through and have a closer look and talk about the faces, and then go through which ones are considered more valuable. So if that sounds like something that you might be interested in, then let me know down in the comments. Alright, so let's talk about the next new major addition for this mode. And this here is a system known as Conundrum, which is designed to be the end game challenge for this expansion. So if you've ever played Hades, then you might be familiar with its endgame mechanic called Heat, and this is pretty much the same thing. Conundrums is a mechanic that is only available on difficulty 5 runs, and allows you to add stacking modifiers to your run to make it even harder than it already is. It starts off at Conundrum 1, and it goes all the way to Conundrum 12. It's not as flexible as the Hades Heat system however, in that you don't get full control over each individual modifier, but instead the Conundrums are split into two categories, known as Type Conundrum and Follow Up Conundrum. Each of these categories have their own modifiers, and you can increase or decrease the category level in order to add or remove modifiers from that particular pool. Because this is pretty much end game content for Golden Gears, and because I'm not a Hoyo content creator, meaning I don't get a one month head start on creator access to make videos, I've not yet had the chance to go through and document everything in relation to this mechanic, but we'll definitely cover this in more detail later down the line once we've gotten a couple more runs under our belts. So that pretty much covers it for the new core mechanics in Golden Gears. There's still so much more that I haven't spoken about, but I think a lot of those things are better off experience for yourself, so I'll just mention it briefly here. So let's start off with this new mechanic that you may have noticed pop up in the conundrum section earlier, and it's called Resonance Extrapolation and Formation Extrapolation. So to put this simply, Resonance Extrapolation is a path resonance attack that the bosses have access to, and they cast it on you. So during your playthrough at the end of plane 2, just like in the Swarm Disaster, you'll be able to pick between two bosses with each option granting a Residence Extrapolation to the final boss. So in this example here, we have to decide between giving the boss the power of Abundance, in which they will heal and dispel themselves, or the other option would be to give them the power of Nihility, in which they will apply a bunch of dots onto your team. The term Formation Extrapolation is just a fancy way of describing what the criteria is for advancing forward the Residence Extrapolation. So for this example here, if we went with the Nihility Resonance Extrapolation, the formation states that every time our team members receive any dot damage, the boss will be able to recast the extrapolation sooner. So moving on to other items. Obviously there is the new Path of Eurydition, and I'll just touch briefly on that as it kind of requires its own video to go through the blessings and whatnot. But essentially this path is going to be tied around dueling huge amounts of AoE damage through your ultimate, and it's going to be incredibly powerful. It's got a bunch of blessings that allow you to chain ultimates one after the other, which is just super fun. Then within the simulated universe itself, we've got so many new things to experience, a bunch of new occurrences and curios, new adventure domains, and new enemies and bosses. So I think I've rambled on long enough, so I'll just close it here. I hope this helps you wrap your head around the new system and has you excited to jump on in. For those of you who have been around my channel for a while, know that I'm primarily an achievement hunting focused channel and that's not changing. I'll have guides up for all the simulated universe achievements within 48 hours of the new patch launch, so keep an eye out for that. And so this is my first dip into long form guide content, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I don't have the luxury of pre-recording gameplay content off of a creator server, and as such, I've had to hand draw and animate much of what you've seen here today, so I want to give a big shout out to everyone who helped to piece this together. If you've got any further questions, feel free to drop me a comment down below and I'll do my best to respond. Alternatively, I'm always around the StarDB Discord server, so feel free to jump on there and shoot me a message.